Good morning, I'm Andrew Smith. We've got another three minutes to go, but I'm just starting so I can get this device in focus and let people join that are interested in these Periscope sessions from the Open University. I've got a couple of little things to do, like retweet tweets about this so that I can help this reach a much larger audience and also just sort of adjust the settings and stuff like that. Um, for you, uh, those of you who are possibly a little bit more geeky, you may notice that I'm actually running this on a Mac. And yes, it does look like Packet Tracer is native on the Mac, but I've actually got this running in a wine bottler created by an application called Packet Tracer on the Mac. Um, sorry, um, Play on Mac. Play on Mac is quite a useful little tool. It's free. We've used it a lot with our academy and we've actually got a community of tw um, 1,200 individuals on Facebook that work with us and work with it because it's quite straightforward to use. So if you're a Mac user and you want to put Packet Tracer on because you're a member of Cisco Academy, you can actually install the latest Windows version. The only thing it does not do is interact with the online skills based assessments because the Java applet that Cisco used for them would look for it native on the operating system. It just doesn't know how to look for it within a wine bottler. But overall, that's a sort of mi minor issue. We've had people doing all the um, activities, handing assignments using Packet Tracer and um, complete our courses at the Open University using Packet Tracer, using the Play on Mac um, wine bottler as um, sort of part of their studies. We've got probably less than a minute to go. I just sort of focus in a little bit. As usual, it'll be sort of tripod in, tripod out. Oh, it's just slipped, I'll have to clamp that better. Um, as usual, there'll be a little bit of um, my fingers I'm um, sort of tapping away in the background as we um, do this activity. So I'm just putting the tripod up a bit higher so I can reach the keyboard on my uh, MacBook Air. As ever, if you want to ask any questions, please do. They will pop up in front of me. I'm sitting behind the screen and um, will be sort of tapping away and talking my way through this. I estimate that this session will probably last about 15 minutes a day. So, good morning. Hello, I'm Andrew Smith from the Open University and we're doing a series of experimental Periscope sessions using Packet Tracer to teach basic, basic networking skills to the Cisco Networking Academy. By the end of this, will you be an expert in the technology? No. Will you have just discovered something very useful to help your studies? We hope so. So in front of us, we've actually got a slightly different network from last week where we had two routers and two PCs. This time we've got three routers. Our intention is to show you how RIP, Router Information Protocol, works. RIP is one of the oldest protocols going and is still used in some systems, but from a teaching perspective, it's a great protocol just to help people get their head around how routers learn. The important thing is, if you actually look closely at these routers, I've currently called one on the left, left, one on the right, right, and one in the middle, middle. Left cannot see right, right cannot see left, middle can see left and right. I have configured left with a full RIP version 2 configuration. I have configured right with a full RIP version 2 configuration, but I haven't configured middle yet. So they can't see across the system. I've used a crossover cable again, just for speed, to make things simple and straightforward. So you will notice that the between left and middle, it's a one dot network between middle and right. It's a two dot network. And I've programmed three loopbacks on each router. And I've added, I'm adding them to the routing protocol. So on the left, we've got 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, middle 66, 66, 66, 66, 66. And on right, 99, 99, 99, 99. Why? They're easy addresses to remember. They're obvious addresses. Would you see these in the real world on the internet? 
probably not, but for this example exercise, you should be able to see them. I'm just going to open up left. I've actually configured Packet Tracer so it automatically skips straight to the CLI and I've actually configured the CLI to be a black background with white text. If you're not experts with Packet Tracer, you can go into Preferences and change the settings to make the environment more comfortable. I found that this um, more black background works a little bit better um, for display purposes on this video. So if I type in enable, sorry about the shaky camera, and then just do show run, you'll see that I've got a basic config. Straight away you can see I've got the loopback configured, I've got the fast Ethernet interfaces configured, I've got um, 00 and 01 configured as you would do. Um, to expect so obviously on this one it's just zero zero and you can see the most important thing and I'm going to pinch in a little bit more and just turn my camera I've got rip configured so router rip it has to be version 2 to handle different subnets I've got the one dot network one zero 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 and I've got the 33 network 33 zero 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 I have to do the whole network okay it's the network address no matter what subnets masks you're applying on the interface and I'm just doing a default, default for class A, I know some of you know that that um, is a meaningless term but I'm doing a very basic default configuration all the way through. So when you configure a routing protocol like RIP you don't put any interface IDs in, you put in the whole network or whole subnetwork. And the reason that you do that is you are routing a network, you are not routing an interface, okay? And the configuration on the opposite side, on right, is almost exactly the same, where we can quickly skip him. I'll bring this into um, focus. Type in enable, type in show run, and quickly bang through. And then zoom in again and you can see router rip configuration but this time it's the two dot network and it's a 99 network because we're on the right hand side after all so what am i going to do well i am actually going to start pinging from left to right using the router so back into left i'm going to just enter a few times so you can see what i'm doing and i'm going to ping but i'm going to do what we call an extended ping Okay, which means that we don't just type in ping and the IP address, which will only send five packets. So I want the IP protocol, I want the address of 99.99.99.99. Hit enter, I'll send a thousand packets. Okay, so 1000, normal datagram side, we can actually send pack much larger packets, I'm not interested in that. I don't want any timeouts, I don't want any extended commands because you can actually set source address and all sorts of other interesting things. And we don't want to switch the range of size. So off it goes, okay? And as you can see, it can, oh, I've got, I've left the configuration on from last time. Bear with me a second, that shouldn't have worked. Okay. I'm just going into middle and I'm just doing no conf and then no router rip it's obviously picked up my old config so I've just got rid of rip from there sorry cock up early in the morning here in the UK I'm just gonna fast forward time to stop that and fast forward time again and fast forward time again I've got to keep fast forwarding time on this just skip all those nice annoying pa packets that's gone through okay my mistake so if i did this again now and just did ping enable ping and then for the protocol ip address 99.99.99.99 and then repeat count 1000 not worried about data ground, so I don't want to say it. Right, now let's hope that this should work properly this time. Okay, so there you go. As it should have been if I bothered to check it from last night properly. 
uh, such, as, such as technology. So the middle isn't configured. So I'm gonna leave left pinging away. I've just moved it out of screenshot at the moment. I'm gonna open up middle and bring that into focus. So if we actually go into middle and enable, what we'll find is if I show run, is we should have a basic config of just the in interfaces only. Obviously we've got two interfaces configured on here because we've got a cable pointing to the left and a cable pointing to the right. But as you can see, there is no routing protocol, okay? So to configure RIP, I do terminal configuration. So conf t is a shortcut and then just type in router and then the protocol I'm going to use it could be router RIP, router OSPF, router ERGRP but you need to put autonomous system numbers in for them then I'm going to tell it it's got to be version 2 it must be version 2 so that it can handle different subnets and then I just set up the network so network 66 .0 .0 .0 network and it's going to be 2.0.0.0 so if we look at our ping it's still not working yet happily not working and then finally network get into focus andrew network 3.0.0.1.0.0 let me learn to type what i say that i'm gonna do end Okay, now it started to work. Okay, it started to work because there are 30 second um, hello updates um, passing between the routers now, and uh, middle has just said hello to both the 66 and the 2. Dot network, so it's learned to cross them. Then it said hello when I configured it at the end, the one dot network, and suddenly left had a packet that it knew its routing protocol could put into its routing database. And ping is now moving quite happily from left to right. So if I actually go into the right router, type in enable and do show IP route, you can see that it can see the 66, the 99, and the 33 network. 66 is locally connect. Sorry, 99 is locally connected. 66, it's learnt via RIP because it's on middle. We are on right after all. 33, it's learnt via RIP because it's on left, and it can see directly connected the two dot and remotely via RIP the one dot network. And it, you can see the metrics. And you can see the number of hops as well. So because 33 is the farthest away, it's got a metric of 120 slash 2 slash 2 hops. And everything else, because it can see via middle, it sees via one hop. So the fact that it has to pass through left to get to 33 gives it that extra hop. So it's actually learned that routing table topology. And it's learned that from its own routing entry of the directly connected networks, middle's routed entry, and then what middle is learning from left. So it doesn't actually have programmed in it one dot or 33 dot. That is information that's been passed downstream from the middle router to the right router, which is incredibly useful. So going back to our ping, our ping worked quite nicely there and it sent out those thousand packets quite quickly. But we can upset things. So I'm going to do the ping again. Target IP address 99.99.99.99. But we want to see now, so we're going to do about 500 this time. 500, not 5,000, Andrew. Da, da, da. So it's pinging away. So I need to go into middle. And this is the bit that's quite interesting. I'm going to um, conf t, and then I'm going to just type in no router rip, because the no command is the opposite and it deletes stuff. So end wr just to make sure that it's in the config. And you'll see here on the left hand side, it's gone from it can ping it to unreachable. And the reason it's unreachable 
is that the entries for 99 are still in the routing table. It hasn't yet learnt that it's no longer there. The reason for that is this can take up to 90 seconds is because there's something called a hold down timer. So every 30 seconds you get an update and then if there is no update after 30 seconds have elapsed and there is no update a hold down timer is triggered where it will sit and wait and will wait to see if there will come any updates and if that hold down timer is never refresh it counts down from three times the update time of the routing protocol then it will delete that entry from the routing table so in theory it could take just under two minutes or one and a half minutes depending on the time when the last update occurred and the disconnection took place so i've got to waffle on <laughs> for this amount of time but i can in packet tracer fast forward time a little bit i'm just you know jumping in i'm going to press the fast forward time button and fast forward time and fast forward time until eventually it will just give up and it should go back to docs there you go and it's just told us that it's been unsuccessful okay so if i just do show ip root now you can see it's still seeing those remote networks because it still hasn't learned and what will happen is shortly during the um, time of this uh, video it will actually remove that routing protocol from its routing table and we've just got to sit patiently and wait for that to happen. Obviously, you can clear the routing table by using the clear IP roots. I think it's IP roots asterisk. Bear with me a second. Ah, yes, it just needed a. It wasn't a S, and that will now, if I do show IP root it will get rid of it for it. So I can manually do it in advance. So in this 15 minute video, you've seen me make a couple of mistakes, more with my typing and with my preparation, but we set up a routing protocol on two sides of a network. And as soon as we enabled it in the middle of the network, the network was able to ping from end to end. As soon as I removed the routing protocol entry in the middle, there was a tiny delay and then it just stopped because the routing protocol in the middle and the router in the middle did not know where to pass the packets to in the network. So left and right were no longer connected to each other. RIP is a very quick and easy routing protocol to set up, but it's slow in responding to network changes. It's, it's historical. It's a protocol from the 80s. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a much better, faster, more adaptive routing protocols available now like EIGRP, OSPF, ISIS for interior protocols and obviously BGP for exterior and interior routing. I've been Andrew Smith from the Open University and I hope you found this short periscope session on routing using RIP very useful as part of our experimentation with Cisco Neticad. I am now going to stop the video.